Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the revised GRE. The book that we're going to use, you and I, is this one right here that I'm holding in my hand. It is called the Official Guide to the GRE Revised General Test. You must have this book with you, in front of you, while you are working with me on these problems. Because all of the problems that I'm going to solve are going to come out of this book. This is the only book on the market, and I repeat, it's the only book on the market which contains real GRE questions put together by the same people, same folks, ETS, Educational Testing Service, the same folks who are going to give you your exam. Every other material that you find on the market, I'm sure everybody else does a wonderful job, beautiful job, but they are not real exams, they are not real questions. They may, very close, they may be very close to the real thing, but they are not real things. This is, this is what I'm going to work out of. We are going to do little by little. My goal is to do every single question, every single math question in the book here, but we'll see how things go. Today is our day number one and I'm on page 110. So, have this book in front of you, turn to page number Turn to page number 107. On page 107, you will see, page 107, you will see it's the beginning of the fifth section where it says GRE quantitative reasoning. We're starting from here, we're going to go page by page, every single page. If there's a math problem, you and I are going to do it together. And I want to do every single one of them, regardless of how simple, how ridiculously easy the question may be. As you will see the very first one, it is a very simple question. So let's get going. Enough of the talk. The very first problem that we find on page number 110 is this one right here. We are given two quantities in column A, column B. We are given two quantities. Let me change the color. The blue color is very light and the marker is dying. In the first, in the first column, we are told 2 times 6. In the second column, we are, we are told we are given a quantity of 2 plus 6 and they're, they're, we are being asked which one is greater. Obviously 2 times 6 is 12, 12 is more than 8. That's it. The answer is, answer is A. Let's look at second one. Second problem they tell us that Lionel is younger than Maria. Lionel is younger than Maria. Again, as I said already and I'm repeating myself, it is imperative, it is important, it is vital, it is crucial that you must have this book, that you have this book rather, uh, in front of you so that you can follow the work. Don't depend on my writing the entire problem on the blackboard. I'm not going to do that. I don't have the, liber I don't have the luxury of, of putting down the entire problem on the blackboard. Lionel is younger than Maria. This is very simple. This was very straightforward. So I put it on the blackboard. And they are asking us, how does twice Lionel's age, twice... Lionel's age compared to Maria's age. Not twice Maria's age, but simply Maria's age. Now, if my handwriting is lousy and if you can't read anything, you can't figure out what it says here, I am taking it for granted that since you have the book in front of you, you know, you know damn well what this is because you are reading the problem along with me. It's supposed to say Lionel, I misspelled it, I think. And it's a horrible handwriting. But that's okay, because I'm assuming that you have it in front of you. The simplest and the quickest way to solve this problem is to just plug in numbers. Plug in numbers, make up, make up ages for Lionel, and find. And if you find two different scenarios where the answer changes, then the, then the answer is going to be D. Make up Lionel's age. So let's pretend that Lionel is a five-year-old and Maria is ten-year-old. Well, if that were the case, if Lionel is five-year-old, because we are told Lionel is younger than Maria, we are not told how much younger. So it's up to us what we can put in any number like we like any number that we like for Lionel's age as long as it is less than Maria's age because we are told that Maria is older, that's all we are told. So twice Lionel's age would be two times five compared to Maria's age, which is ten. In this case, these two quantities are equal, the answer is C. But what if Lionel instead of being four, what if Lionel instead of being four, he happened to be 
what if Lionel instead of being five rather happened to be four year old? If he happened to be four year old instead of five year old, then twice his age would have been eight. And here we have ten. Eight is smaller than ten. Now the answer is B. Because we're getting conflicting answers, if first we got C, now we got B, because we have conflicting answers, the answer is D. Is it possible for answer to turn out to be an A, which, which is something that we don't need to do here, we are done now. Since we have conflicting answers, the answer is D, that is, that is, we are done, that, that is it. The part that I'm about to do now is just an extra part. Can, can we show here a scenario where the answer might turn out to be A, where, in other words, Quantity in the first column is bigger than quantity in the second column. Of course, what if Lionel, what if Lionel happens to be six? If Lionel happens to be six, then twice his age, twice his age would have been twelve. This is still ten. In this case, the answer would have been A. You see, but this part was unnecessary. I'm going to digress here big time and uh, before I can do the digression you're going to have to excuse me for about 10 seconds I have to run to the next room and I grab something I'll be back in count 10 seconds okay I'm back now listen I'm, I have this uncontrollable urge to break into a sermon right now and as you watch more of my videos you will see that I have a great uh, a great tendency, great deal of tendency to do that uh, that is breaking the sermons we are here to work on the math problems that's what we are here as I told you in the beginning in the introduction uh, our goal is to, uh, to work on the math problems of the GRE but while we are doing that while we are doing that job that portion of the exam at the same time it does not hurt to work on our vocabulary as well. Vocabulary is very important, it is very crucial for the English portion of the exam. And to learn good words, not just for the GRE, not just for the, not just for the mere sake of uh, preparing for the exam, but also to, to know the words just for knowing them. These are, these are good words to know that you, can come up, that you come across in your reading and writing and all, uh, in the college all the time. The word that I just used, the word that I actually wanted to use, which I did not use, is superfluous which means extraneous, something that is uh, unneeded, unwanted, unrequired, uncalled for, unwarranted, uh, and so forth. The word is superfluous. If you go to, if you just type in Keshwani prep dash vocab, dash vocab, dash day 47, that's what that 47 is for. Just type in Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day 47, and you will learn this word, and you will learn along with that word some other good words. The other word that comes to my mind right now is gratuitous. If you don't know what it means, then watch the video and you will learn it. If you did not understand what I just said. So the part that I just did here, the third scenario here, we were looking for a conflict. We already found the conflict. The first time the answer was C, the second time the answer was B. Since we have a conflict, the answer is D. This part that I did here was superfluous, was unneeded, was unrequired, was uncalled for, unnecessary. It was gratuitous. It was uh, superfluous. But anyway, I did it anyway just because I wanted to see if it is possible that we may have a scenario where the answer may change one more time to A. The answer is yes, of course. It, answer, answer of course is yes. We just showed it. Let's do the next problem on page number 111. Or better yet, I'm debating here if I, sh if I should do... Let's do page 111 because it's a very straightforward question. It's a very straightforward, simple question on the top of page 111. They are asking us to compare 54% of 360 versus 150. Well, 54% is of course more than half. 54% of anything is more than half of that thing. We know that half, half of 360 is 180. And how do we know that half of 360 is 180? Just divide by 2. And don't depend on the calculator that they give, that they give you on the exam. Uh, make sure, again I'm breaking the sermon, 
use that calculator as little as possible because whenever you reach for that calculator on the, in the corner of the screen there, you're wasting your time. It's very straightforward. Just do it by hand. It, it will be quicker, it will be quicker and simpler. And just to make a point that it's quicker, I have to erase and redo it here. There we go. 360 divided by 2. How many 2's in a 3? There are 1 2's in a 3. And the remaining one goes and joins this guy, becomes 16. How many 2's in 16? There are 8 eight 2's in 16. How many 2's in a 0? There are 0 2's in a 16. So it's 180. 180 is half of 360, which represents 50%. If 50% of 360 is 180, then 54%, whatever that may be, has to be more than 150. So this quantity, whatever it is, 54% of 160, 54% of 360, whatever it is, has to be one, more than 150, because we just figured out that 50% of 360 is 180, therefore 54%, whatever the hell it may be, is going to be more than 150. These questions are called quantitative comparison. Quantitative comparison. These questions are not called quantitative computation. You're not, you're not expected to, you're not required to, you're not asked to compute anything. You're simply asked to compare things. Uh, by the way, before I forget it, uh, these questions, the quantitative comparison questions just be, that we just did, three of them, these are the exact same questions that used to be there in the old exam. They have not, that, they have not changed that part of the exam. Quantitative comparison questions that we just were talking about just now happen to be uh, happen to happen to exist also in the old format of the exam and therefore if you happen to have the old book if you can get hold of the old book the the tenth edition or if you go to my uh, well if you happen to be at my channel here on the YouTube uh, click on the GRE quantitative comparison question and you will find that I have done every single quantitative comparison question in the tenth edition of the book there are I think close to 180 of those. So practice as many as you can. The more you practice, the better you will get at them. All right? I'll see you tomorrow where we'll continue where we left off on page number 111. There is one more question. Um, that's the idea. I'm just going to do one or two questions every day and just keep on chugging along uh, until, we, until we finish the thing. Sometimes I use these expressions. I, want to use, I have this uncontrollable urge to use these expressions and I muck them up. Muck, okay? With an M, not an F. Don't get excited. I'll see you tomorrow, all right? Bye.